All right, welcome everybody. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. It is uh, going to be our Sunday night Watchmen live show, and this evening we're going to do something a little bit different, kind of like we did in the past, where we're going to actually go into uh, some of the current events around the world. Just uh, it's been kind of a shakeup this week, and so we we've, we've been uh, watching the headlines, and um, and it's just I think something that's gotten all of our attention. And so um, Bear and Hotel, welcome, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. How are y'all doing? Just living the dream, my man. So, um, but yeah, so we're going to go into uh, some of the headlines, I think is, is I think just to kind of level set us, like what is going on in the world? You guys watching this stuff unfold in Israel? It's insane, isn't it? Absolutely. Dude, I've, I've just, it's crazy just trying to imagine living there, just how much is going on and just it's just wow it's pretty terrifying when you when you just watch some of the the people just posting up on just their livelihoods it's nuts yeah and they're they're kind of used to it which is really strange i i can remember um uh, being on a special project oh man this is probably 20 years ago and uh one of our our reps was actually over there in uh, tel aviv and uh i remember him being on a on a cell phone in a conference call with us and uh, we're all sitting around this table, and all of a sudden you hear the the air sirens going off and everything else. And he's like, "Yeah, hang on, I got to take cover real fast." And he'd he'd dip into a little cafe and hang out. But that's kind of like their way of life. Like they happens all the time. It's it's pretty crazy. But that Iron Dome in the background behind you, Bear, is just it kind of tells the whole story, doesn't it? Oh man, yeah, I saw that picture thrown up. I'm like, I'm gonna definitely use that. That's just amazing to watch. Yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, what. Um, so to your right, uh, those are actually, they, they actually launch these, it's almost like uh, air defense guns, right? They, right? And those are tracers you see going out, but that's, uh, they knock them out of the sky with that. But then those, uh, the Iron Dome is kind of like uh, Thad or, or um, some of the other Patriot systems that we've seen in the past, right? Where um, it's amazing because as soon as they detect something has been launched, those those uh, rockets will actually take off and they'll actually lock onto a target and then they start to chase it and when they get into proximity of it they actually explode right beside it and that's what actually takes out the the uh, the incoming you know rocket which is crazy right. it just basically they're take so the rocket still comes to the ground it just doesn't it just doesn't have an explosive on it because it's been detonated in the air so crazy it's pretty wild but the the uh, the engineering behind that is insane. So anyway, all right. Well, without further ado, uh, Bear, do you want to kick us off into prayer this evening? Yes, would love to. Awesome. Father God, we come before you in this time knowing you have control over all things and know all things. Lord, I pray that... Um, that you give us those um, those um, listening now and to us discernment, Father, uh, that we would draw closer to you in, in this time. As we look at the world events and we read the truth in, in your word, I pray that it brings us wisdom and knowledge on how we respond, that uh, in turn it brings you glory. I pray that those hearing um, will find strength to stand strong and be a light in this dark time. With you, God, um, we know we shouldn't fear um, because, uh, because you give us that strength, Lord. And we shouldn't be anxious. As it says in Philippians, uh, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving present, your request uh, to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. So, Lord, I thank you for this time. I thank you for these two men. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Nice job, brother. Yes, sir. All right. So, Let's uh, we'll kick things off looking at uh, the unrest in Israel. So I'm just got to pull this up real fast. Some of the the headlines and some of the things that are going on. And so um, 
this is a power plant that actually got hit uh, as we kind of get into I'm going to show some of the video behind it but this is the things that these guys are just dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis and so you can see uh, rockets from Gaza hit this uh, this power plant on Tuesday and it's it damaged the uh, trans Israeli pipeline and setting an oil tank ablaze but uh, you can see I'm just going to kind of hit this here in the background but give you kind of an idea of what they have been going through but you can see you know just it's chaos over there right now it's it is it is utter chaos and it's it's just shocking i mean you think about a day in the life of right and what these what what they're going through every single day and just knowing that that this is all part of god's plan i mean this is he is um sorry as i <laughs> reel through the blue angels there uh but here's another shot of this stuff just see that fire. Oh, Those oil fires are nasty me, and they're just about impossible to put out. But just crazy. And then here's another one right here. It's, it's uh, just another angle of it. You can just see the intensity of this thing. But it's crazy. I um, One of the things I wanted to show, uh, besides here, here is um, uh, Israeli bombs one of the Gaza uh, chief's homes that uh you know from you can see some of the iron dome into play here kind of like what was going on in your background but as hostility stretched into just seventh oh. day with no sign yeah it's of crazy soon the sounds of heavy bombardment across the coastal enclave roared through the night every night so yeah you can see that one just according to Hamas lighten up Yaya al -Sinwari's home was targeted it's incredible led the military the uh, that is what they're dealing with every day it's just it's crazy to think about that you know we watch these things and we start thinking about how how we are um you know just from a, a you, you can remember desert storm and watching all of that stuff unfold and you remember um as that it started to break out and some of the, the the videos that were coming through and you just thought for a minute man this is it's incredible to watch because it was just one thing after another after another you know and you're, you're watching these cruise missiles come in and of course uh, hotel, you you lived over there for a while, right? You you dealt with Afghanistan. This. Yeah, I lived in Afghanistan. I lived in Kabul for three and a half years and eight months in Kandahar. Right. So. And you were. It's funny because before we went live, you were talking about how when the air horns would go off, you would basically just you know go yeah, back inside your. <laughs> hopefully, my previous bosses aren't listening. But yeah, we would just reach over, lock the door. I mean, I, I can run five hundred yards and die on the way to the bunker or just sit in my office, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why that's pretty much what the Israelis are doing right now. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's all you really can do. I mean, you can't yeah. control it. We didn't have an iron dome. Um, Iraq actually did have, it. uh, I've seen footage of it in use just clips here and there, but, yeah. um, from, from what my buddy said, they had one in Iraq. So. Yeah. Now, hotel, you were talking about some, or uh, sorry, Barry, you were talking about some of the folks you were watching on the media that were just laying down in the streets and not really doing much. Yeah, what, I went through the the TikTok videos because they seem to be, you know, kind of updated um, on most of their current events. And yeah, I was going through Israel, and there was three ladies doing a TikTok um, outside their car, laying down as missiles are flying over their heads, and they were kind of like laughing at first. I'm like, wow, just what incredible just i don't know i think mean, if it was happening here everyone's reaction would be so different because it's never happened here but to live there it's kind of their norm and you yeah. know and and as they were hitting you can see the phone shake you know and then they they give a little scream but yet not too rocked right so it's just it's just i was <laughs> like wow it was amazing yeah it's pretty incredible right. pretty incredible when you think about it like i said it's uh their, their normal day you know way of life um, so check this out. This is one of the things I was looking at and I pulled this video. It blew my mind. The fact that remember nine 11, how the buildings just came straight down vertically. Yep. I want you to watch this video and just kind of put that data point in your mind because this is a trip when you watch it. Okay. But check this out. Straight down. Okay, that's one. And they'll show another one here in a second. And it looks awfully familiar. Look, that's almost demolition-like. 
I mean, how many buildings do you know just come straight down on themselves? See that? See that explosion down at the base of it? Yep. How it just fired? It looks just like 9/11. It's the same, you know, kind of thing where all of a sudden it's you see these little explosions and then the building just goes in on itself, which is like that, controlled. It's just, it's crazy. And and the part of the other building is just still sitting there. <laughs> right. Unless, All right, how do you, unless, how do you unless explain? Unless it's building eight. <laughs> yeah, it's building eight. It's like, how do you explain that? Like, I I, I don't know of any type of, and, uh, and I've been around missiles for several years, you know, working with, uh, with Lockheed. And, you know, we got stuff that'll take things down and we've got things that'll go right through a window and take somebody out, but they're small, right? To see something hit the base of a structure and then the structure just come in on itself is like that's that's a pretty pretty odd to say the least. But um, you know, I don't know all the the story behind it, but it, boy, it seems awfully uh, suspect to me when right. I see that. I'm just like, eh, that that looked almost planned. So, um, but here's another one from the IDF. One of the things they were talking about is how they were. They were using these brilliant tactical moves to launch this uh, this air campaign. So they're they're dropping stuff from, you know, and these are probably laser guided, um, you know, dropping stuff onto uh, the bad guys, right? And then you've got here where I was I was looking at uh, Amir's site, uh, Behold Israel, and he's talking about how they're they're talking about a potential ground invasion, uh, and where Israel has just called up nine thousand reservists, and they already had. 7,000 on top of that. So they're about to, to be going door to door, uh, you know, going after this pretty, pretty hot and heavy. And so, so it makes you wonder as I hit the wrong button there, sorry. Uh, it makes you wonder really what is the, when you look at the peace deal and you look at all the things around it, could this be a triggering mechanism to pull everybody to the table? I mean, this is probably the, the worst I've seen it in 15 years where, you know, they're like full on engaging, going after folks and, you know, into uh, going after Hamas and Abbas. And it's all Iranian backed. And we know based on Gog and Magog that Iran, Turkey and Syria are all working together. Right. So I don't know. I, I, I'm wondering if this isn't a precursor to the peace deal. So am I pulling the trigger on that peace deal? So I, I was reading, I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but uh, Macron is supposedly over there trying to broker a peace deal. So he's quietly behind the scenes pulling people together. Have you guys read that? No, I, that's news to me. I only read it in the chat. Somebody pointed that out. Yeah, I saw it there too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. So, <laughs> so let's look at just from the Ezekiel 38. Now, remember the Ezekiel 38 piece. And I'm going to pull this up and this is what it, what it reads. Uh, um, and so if you guys want to follow along, this is uh, the ESV, but the, it says the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, set your face against Gog in the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal prophecy against him and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against you, Gog, chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws, and bring you out with your whole army, your horses, your horsemen fully armed, and a great horde with large and small shields, all of them brandishing their swords. Pers uh, sorry, Persia, Cush, and Put will be with them, all with shields and helmets, also Gomer with all his troops, and Beth uh, Tagarma from the far north with all its troops, the many nations with you. And so that is talking about the Ezekiel 38 war. Now, if we look at a map of these areas that I just <laughs> butchered the names of, um, this is, uh, I mean, you can see where they're coming from, right? These are all the countries that are going to be involved. Now, notice under the Magog piece, Ukraine is part of that. And so right now, we we can see a lot of movement going on over there. We, we see Russia kind of pushing in on Ukraine, uh, but they're all going to be a part of this deal going in. And uh, it's it's actually, you know, the thing that is 
the, uh, probably the most interesting about the fact of the Gog Magog, and and if you go a little bit past this 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 war, or this talk about the war, and you get into Ezekiel thirty eight eighteen, which is just barely into it. If you look at what it says, and this is something to pay close attention to, because I'll explain it here in a minute, but Ezekiel 38, 18, but on that day, the day that Gog shall come against the land of Israel, declares the Lord God, my wrath will be roused in my anger. For in my jealousy and in my blazing wrath, I declare on that day, there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, the fish of the sea and the birds of the heavens and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep on the ground and all the people who are on the face of the earth shall quake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the cliffs shall fall and every wall shall tumble to the ground i will summon a sword against gog on all my mountains declares the lord god every man's sword will be against his brother with pestilence and bloodshed i will enter into judgment with him and i will reign upon him and his hordes and the many peoples who are with him, torrential rains and hailstorms, or hailstones, fire and sulfur. So I will show my greatness and my holiness and make myself known in the eyes of many nations. Then they will know that I am the Lord. And so that right there is the day of wrath. That's the day of the Lord. And so you have to remember so the things when i start talking about the volcanic activity and the things that we're watching for you can find it all like hailstones and and sulfur and fire and all the other it's um it starts to kind of stand out and pop a little bit but that uh when you start looking at ezekiel 38 so many people look at that and think oh well this is you know this war is kind of taking shape we see the arrangements we see uh, the things that have been talking uh here's a, a perfect example of this is if you go look at Turkey and Russia and the and what uh, Erdogan just told Putin, he said Israel needs a strong and deterrent lesson. So we already know these two are working together. We already know that the um, that Iran is also part of that deal. That's that trifecta we've been talking about, and they pulled that alliance together. And this is something that Ezekiel spoke about like 2,700 years ago. And so, um, but here it is right here. Erdogan on Wednesday told uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin, the international community should give Israel a strong and deterrent lesson as punishment for responding so strongly to deadly Palestinian terror rocket attacks. So uh, they've already, this is kind of, the hook is, is going into the old cheekbone of, uh, of Turkey and Russia. So it's going to be real interesting to see what happens from there and so if if indeed this is a precursor to the peace agreement um the triggering mechanism and then you've got a gog magog war that kicks off then uh man we're our time is close <laughs> really close uh, sounds uh yeah i mean we've been i think since we've started this whole series right we've kind of been looking at the birth pains and then as you do your um, your watchman your throughout the week, you can just see it just progressing, right? As, yeah. as, as it's just, just more and more happening all over around the world. And then you have this happening now. It's like it's all fallen into, into place. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, if you think about what Trump did with, the, with that initial peace agreement, right? How he was, he was actually dividing up the land, which is not a good thing, okay? Um, but... He brought all of these nations. He had the Abraham Accord. He had um, so many countries. I want to say there was at one point 130 countries or something that were all talking about coming in on this um, and setting up embassies within, you know, in Jerusalem and just just all kinds of different. I mean, it was a groundswell event. Like there were so many that were interested. Uh, I do believe if if he had stayed in there for another four years that he would have had that thing so far along that. You know, but you kind of wonder, OK, well, he's not there. How does this thing get Does somebody pull the trigger? Right. But you have to remember what is what does scripture tells us. It, it, it tells us that um, that the Antichrist comes in and actually confirms a government uh, a covenant. Right. So that means the covenant is already in work, already in play, already uh, has been kind of staged. This person just comes in and basically inks the deal. That's why I was like, 
the fact that Macroon is over there or Macroon is um uh, is uh over there doing his thing quietly uh and we got this all going on I I it almost seems like this is kind of the trigger that's going to kind of pull that into play so pretty pretty wild pretty actually pretty exciting to see it you know did, yeah, did, the, didn't didn't uh, they oh go ahead bear no no i'll sing yeah without a doubt it's just uh, agreeing didn't didn't they hit the temple mount as well yeah they actually caught it on fire i was going to uh show that here in a second oh, sorry. Uh, and that's a good segue no no that's a good segue let me show you something this is what's really interesting now re- re- remember as the gentiles we know that the Messiah that they're expecting, the Jews that are going to stand up at the Temple Mount, is actually the Antichrist. We know that. They don't know that. They think this is the first time he's showing up. Okay, um, and so this is from a, a prominent rabbi over there. And uh, hang on one second, I have to I have to go interact with this uh, to turn that little filter thing off. But this uh, this rabbi says so. There was a massive fire on the Temple Mount, and he is saying that that means that the Messiah is imminent. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this guy, his name is Laser Brody, but he's a, a prominent rabbi over there. And he's basically said uh, that following the ap- apocalyptic state of a massive blaze on the Temple Mount that engulfed the, the, uh, the mosque, uh, the radio show host and Kabbalah expert Rabbi Laser Brody released a statement saying that the Messiah's arrival is imminent. And so, yeah, this, this is what you were talking about uh, this place being on fire that's um it's pretty interesting so they're expecting any day now for this guy to show up matter of fact i I don't know if that was us talking about this recently but there's a guy who they believe is the messiah right yeah you know and they've got a pretty big following uh and he's actually a jewish guy but uh he's gaining steam yeah He's gaining some steam, which is is interesting. They're they're so desperate to find this guy, you know, uh, but and they're so close to standing up this third temple that all they need is somebody like for this just a ceasefire in play in place and um, and people start signing up to a peace agreement that would put the whole thing in motion. Then the clock starts ticking. So. Um, so here's the other thing too that I I found repulsive actually is the fact that did you see this this headline um, about flashbang how they're sending aid to Palestine as the conflict intensifies it it just bl- blows me away how we've completely 180'd our approach uh, you know you went from from Trump to where he was just so pro-Israel, recognize him as a capital to all of a sudden you got a guy who just turned his back on him, didn't even reach out to Netanyahu when he was elected or falsely elected, right? Hasn't called him, hasn't done anything. He just, I think he was almost 80 days in before he actually reached out to him. But go ahead, uh, Hotel, you're getting ready to say something. <laughs> I oh, think you were... d- d- Didn't he already give them money? Yeah, he's been pumping money into that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, through, through Iran. Didn't he give Iran money when he first got into office? I don't know if he gave them I was, any I was money. reading something where they were alluding to the fact that that probably funneled over to Palestine. Yeah, I know he gave Ukraine a lot of money. And so... Uh, yeah, but that was buying back. Yeah, some hush money. We all know what that was about, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But... Uh, uh, I'm sure that money has already been pumped into Palestine. Matter of fact, you'd probably find out that uh, that he's been somehow we're connected to all of this. I would imagine, you know, the rockets and everything else, and the push. It's just, uh, it's just but, the timing's weird because you know everything was dead quiet, and then as soon as he's in office, everything falls apart. Yeah, well, it's because he's so weak. He doesn't have any foreign yeah. policy. He doesn't. He's not pro-Israelis, obviously against them, uh, for them to give money to Iran and their nuclear program, even the, the administration prior to that, right? The Kenyan and folks, um, clearly not for uh, Israel, not pro-Israel. So not a not a big shocker, but, um, uh, you know, take a look at the things that just took place. And we, we were talking about this a little bit earlier. The fact that, that uh, he, he made that uh, speech to Congress, right? 
And at the end of it, he didn't say anything about God bless America, right? He just walked off. Um, the fact that for the first time in 70 years, uh, we didn't have a national day of prayer at the U.S. Capitol. First time in 70 years. It was denied. So the, uh, the pastor requested it to do it, and they said no. And so he was outside of the gate of that, you know, out in the parking lot, basically doing his thing. But uh, that, that just goes to show you, I honestly think God's hand is lifted off of this country. There, there is no protection. And uh, at this point, um, it's, uh, we just need to be praying because <laughs> this is yes. about to get real. That's what I think personally. Yeah, I, I fully agree. I mean, when that came about, that he got denied to do a national day of prayer and just looking at where they've gone from <clears throat> pulling God from the nation, taking it out of schools, shutting down churches, they're no longer essential. You know, what is essential? Oh, liquor stores, um, Planned Parenthood, you know, so that you go through those motions and what is important to them. And God has nothing to do with, with any of what their agenda is about. You know, and then now putting the fear of masks into people and calling your freedom or a type of salvation of a, of a, of a normal life, you got to get a vax. You know, it's just like the priorities are flipped and yes. um, it's just going strictly against what, what God says. I, I've said it before that the, the political compass was grabbed sometime around 2009 and twisted 179 degrees. Well, 178 degrees. The only two things that have not changed political party so far are uh, pro-life and um, religion. Yeah, so far. Um, yeah, you're right. And, and it has the world is on its head. Right. And so um, you can actually go back and, and there is there's um, I think it's Isaiah that talks about uh, woe um, when it talks about how people that confuse sweet for bitter and bitter for sweet take good for evil and evil for good. It is. We, we've seen that reversal kind of take place in the world in general. It's almost as though there's a uh, uh, just a, a, a spiritual darkness that has been just pushed out into the world. And and, uh, and you can really you can just see it in people. People are just getting crazy all around the world. It's like something's in the water, man. It's insane. Something's driving people crazy. I've been saying that for a year now. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Now, I will tell you one thing that uh, is a little glimmer of hope, man, is that I don't know if you guys saw this, but Texas, uh, the House, actually, they just voted. Uh, Texas lawmakers passed a bill. You're talking about Planned Parenthood uh, Thursday that would prohibit all abortions in the state after six weeks into pregnancy. So it's basically like a heartbeat uh, bill is what it is. But um uh, it would uh, had a unique provision that would allow private citizens to file civil lawsuits against doctors, staff, or even patient fam uh, patients' family or friends who aid and abet in such procedures. The legislation, known to supporters as a heartbeat bill, bans a procedure after cardiac activity can be detected in the embryo, something that generally happens before most patients even know they're pregnant. So thank you, Jesus, for once. We got some legislation and somebody. Now, that is expected to go to Governor Abbott this week to be signed into law. So that, uh, man, that's something to be grateful for. I mean, that, right. you know, that's prayers answered. And, uh, man, that that uh, Texas is kind of stepping out there boldly. Like, they've they just uh, made it. Uh, they're getting ready to pass it unanimously pass the House that uh, they're going to allow – uh, open carry, basically. Anybody can carry any time, like the old West, man. You don't have to have anything. Now, that kind of scares me a little bit because I've been through some of the classes where people are trying to get their CHL and they, they don't even know how to hold their gun, load their gun. Um, the lady, when I got my CHL, um, I was doing it with uh, uh, Jeff Kyle, which is Chris Kyle's brother, right? And so um, I was there with him and his dad, and this is after Chris had passed. And um, and so we were getting our, our um, my wife and I both were getting our, our CHL through him. This is a couple of years back. And, and uh, the lady beside me actually was putting rounds into my target. And she was actually two over for me and shooting my target. So She was that good? Yeah, she's that good. <laughs> she's that good. So, And she wasn't even hitting like center on mine. It was like all over, just like sandblasted. Well, I mean, maybe your target was, target was a bigger threat. 
<laughs> it could have been. I, you know, I didn't think about that. Uh, but she was, uh, that was just one of those days. Um, she actually had one of her hot casings come out. Like I said, she was two over from me. And um, she had uh, one of her brass uh, casings actually went down the back of my shirt. And it came out of her. And man, you talk about trying to shimmy to get that thing out of there. Just, you could feel it just melting the skin down your back. It was insane. But yeah, I was like, would you quit shooting my, shooting my target? It's just insane. So saves your ammo. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, it was pretty bad. But anyway, that, that, that's the only thing that kind of scares me a little bit, uh, but it is a pretty big deterrent, but it just goes to show you, Texas is really kind of stepping out on these things. So we'll see. You never know. They may end up seceding. That would be just, that'd be amazing. Actually. Uh, we need but, someone to, cause once that starts. Yeah. Man, yeah. I think that would be such a beautiful thing. Yeah, maybe after this this uh, Arizona audit uh, finishes up, that may open some eyes, and maybe that's what it'll take. I, I think that's the goal of it, actually. I think I, I don't think in the end any leeway is going to be made there because the rules were not strictly specified beforehand, but right. it'll force them to tell us what the rules are. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, um, so while we're on the subject of Israel, this is another thing that they're, uh, they're dealing with. And these are actually, uh, again, this is from Behold Israel from Amir's site. So if you guys don't follow Amir, um, uh, you can find him over on Behold Israel. He gives some pretty good updates, and he's a very good, uh, he's what we would call a, a messianic Jew, which he believes in Jesus, and he's uh, just a great uh, minister and, and, and uh, just, just an all-around great guy. But uh, anyway... Supposedly, Hamas is. Uh, they released footage of a new suicide drones that have been used in recent attacks, and so Israel has been pretty solid. I think that's why you see the uh, to your to your right bear with the the image of the tracers going out from from that air um, air defense system, not not uh, the other side. Your other side. Oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, those guys over there. <laughs> uh, but I think that's why. Uh, you're seeing that those are they're what they're using to take out these suicide drones. So far, they said they've been pretty successful in taking them out. So, um, of course, I had on my screen that. So you could probably show what I'm talking about now, Bear. That it's on your. So be your left, my right. <laughs> that those tracers. No, that's those are that's Iron Dome. That side over there. Yeah, there we go. Oh, mirrors. <laughs> yeah, those things. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, that's another thing they've been dealing with. So, uh, so let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, this volcano. Have you guys been watching the the, the Cinnabon go off again over in Indonesia? That's a recent one. So this bad dude, I'll, I'm going to show you guys this one because this is a this is a big one. And if this one goes off, it's it's a game changer. Now I will tell you. Uh, let me get up here and interact again with this. But uh, you can see these are kind of the ash clouds that are coming through. This thing is here. There's a good good shot of it. You can see it just kind of spewing into the air. But this this one is uh, historical in terms of what it can do, and that that's kind of a, a one of the beautiful picture of that thing spewing. But it is a big one, and uh, if it goes off in the region, it can certainly uh, hose some things up. And so uh, again, you know, we talk about the things that are happening from a volcanic perspective and how we are uh, actually going through a very interesting time in the last 15 years where our volcanic activity is increasing exponentially. And so when you start looking at these, the day of the Lord and some of the things that we talk about in revelation and, and how God's wrath kicks in. uh, If you look at the descriptions of a lot of that, it is very uh, descriptive of, volcanic ash you know blocking out the sun and uh again if you remember our show when we went back to the fall of rome how the environment was actually a big impact and a couple volcanoes actually caused calamity where uh, they had crop failures and all kinds of different things that took place so when those volcanoes start going like they are and if any of them you know stay for a long period of time and spew a lot of ash it can cool the planet and all it takes is about one or two degrees and crops start going toast and <laughs> you know famine kicks in it's a cascading effect and so that's why i keep chiming on those is because we got to really watch that this is historical for the fact that we've got 
you know, 45 volcanoes around the planet that are active right now that are, that are doing things. So it's just a matter of time before one of the big ones goes. And that, and I know that uh, volcano that just started um, being active. When's the last time that thing actually erupted? Uh, Cinnabon. Yeah. Uh, it's been a couple of years. Uh, it, it has gone off from time to time. It, it, it'll blow. Uh, but it's been a couple years. But but before that, it's been like 200 years or something. It's been a long time. Same thing with Iceland. So a lot of the ones that we're seeing are actually waking up. They haven't they haven't been active for for a long long time. So, uh, you know, I think what we got to watch are like the Yellowstone. The Yellowstone goes off. It's game over. The U.S. Uh, it's just one. You'll there'll be two less states in the in the union <laughs> right out of the gate, right. <laughs> And then you got all the ash and everything else. And with the jet stream, it'll just go right across the bread belt. So, but on that note, uh, have you guys been looking at the drought stuff? Now, Barry, you're in California. Are you guys feeling it? Like, are you seeing it down in Southern California? No, not, you know what? They, they talk about it, but that would probably be more central in the farmlands. Um, but not, not here in, in Southern California. I mean, okay. um, that's where I'm at as, as far as that goes. You know, we actually had some some drizzle today, which it was all day long. So everything stayed pretty wet, which we yeah. needed. Um, so that was a good thing, but yeah, not, I'm not feeling it, but I'm hearing it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, it's been a rainy day. We actually got a whole week of rain coming through uh, here in Texas, which is uh, thank God. But uh, you know, that'll just, that means at the back end of this, we're going to be up to our ears and mosquitoes. That'll be the next thing. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> it's one thing after another. I'm waiting for the cicadas. They were supposed to be, this record um, yeah. cicada thing happening, like trillions of cicadas, and they haven't come out yet. Now, the June bugs are early this year, but uh, I haven't seen the cicadas yet. So do you get those in California? No, they're usually in, a, well, Palm Desert area. Okay. So Arizona, it, where it's usually, you know, hitting 100 degrees. Okay. You get them. You get them up there? Yeah, uh, we, we get them here. I, we had them in Tennessee. Um, yeah. There, I remember specifically once in junior high school, I think it was, they had, they called it the 13 year locust. And I mean, they were literally everywhere. Yeah. It didn't come back in 13 years. I was kind of heartbroken about that because it was really good for fishing, but. Yeah. I think this is a 17 year locust and it's supposed to be trillions. And what's really crazy is that they're saying, uh, well, what's going to be interesting to see is that freeze that came through, if it impacted them or not here in Texas, because we were at below freezing, uh, like a hard freeze for, uh, for an extended period of time. Um, and it actually put all the, the plants in shock. My, like my, tr I've got trees in my backyard. I haven't even started, uh, have no leaves on them hmm. and we're well into spring. And so everything was delayed. And then when it came out, it just came out in abundance, but it's coming out. What's really weird is it's not coming out from the top of the, the branches. It's coming out at the, like the base, like it's, regenerating its entire self again like all the branches are coming out from the base side and not you know where you normally get the bloom the blooms and the leaves up on higher up on the branches not getting any of that it's it's strange but um but check this out so so in the news is this this drought in mexico and i think this is going to be a, a a topic we'll get into here for a minute because i think we've this is going to be a again a cascading effect uh because at the end of the day, if we don't start getting some some rain into these areas, these are areas that are very big farm producers. And so uh, this is this is another one that is on the watcher site. If you guys have never been there, this is a, a really good site, but it's it's got um, talks about this lake. Uh, Cuzio, uh the second largest lake in Mexico, dries up and the fact that it's it's a I mean, this thing's massive. Right. But it just goes it falls in line with uh, what they're actually seeing. The fact that it says at the end of April 2021, the drought conditions were covering 85 percent of Mexico, which I can tell you the last time I covered Mexico, it was at 62 percent. Uh, but if you go over here to the the drought map, which is uh, really interesting, they don't show Mexico in this. But that red and that dark red actually extends all the way down into Mexico. And it's it's you know, 85% of Mexico, which is, that is a ton. I mean, think about how many people eat that food. Uh, if you go to your local grocery store and you're grabbing, you know, 
avocados or lettuce or anything like that, look at where it comes from. It's, it's Mexico, most of it. So this is, uh, this is going to be pretty wild to watch this unfold. And if, if we don't get any more, you can see that drought, all this, this, ex this is actually D4 is a lot of it is the exceptional drought, which means uh, the water tables are, are actually starting to dry up. And it doesn't take much. You get down below into 16 feet into the ground or so with a lot of these existing water tables. I know uh, Natural News, Mike Adams just put together uh, an article that, that talked about just the fact that the water tables are already starting to run out. So that's, uh, that's going to be a doozy, man. You know, you start taking away water. <laughs> and what's crazy is you think about the planet 72% water. And all of a sudden, you, you can't get water on land and everything's drying up. It's, that's insane. That, to me, that's God's hand. That's, that's that whole cascading effect, right? You, take, you put in place a drought. Now you've got dry conditions. You've got fires. Um, but you've also, that which will destroy livestock. It will destroy homes. It will destroy a lot of things. But then you take away the food source. Now, all of a sudden, you've got food shortages, which is you know, that's what they're predicting right now is a lot of this drought is going to impact what's going on the grocery store shelves. So, well, also, I mean, like te Texas, for instance, you just got out of that really bad freeze. I mean, we, we went down for my grandfather-in-law's um, death and uh, everything down there was dead, dude. I, I mean, uh, everything in people's yards, all the palm tree, not all of them, but I mean, a significant portion of them, you know, are, are dead. Yeah. Yeah. It's and so that's that's based on the freeze. Now you go north of us or you go west of us out into um West Texas and you head into Colorado and all those other areas and you're you're dealing with water shortages and droughts which they're they're if the water tables are running out and we have a drought, that means that that's the wells are going dry, right? And so that means they can't water their food. They're going to have to truck it in. Um, you know, you're, you're just, you're no, there's no way you're going to have a bumper crop, right? I mean, it's going to be. And so if you remember last year too, in Iowa, we had that rare storm that went through and it wiped out like cornfields and soy and a whole bunch, like 40% of the U S is product that comes out of that. And it just like a, just wiped it out. It was like a Durango or some kind of a weird storm. Right. I've never even heard of them before. Um, but that's the thing we've got to start kind of preparing ourselves for is, hey, if there's a food shortage, you know, these grocery stores in three days, they go, I mean, they go out like it doesn't, it doesn't take, I mean, you saw the run on toilet paper, right? <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Right. Well, well I, and, and COVID is definitely going to affect that because we talked about that. A lot of stuff had to be destroyed because of that. that's going to catch up with us. But this this fuel thing is going to catch up with us as well, because you know it, it's going to it's going to cost money to, and it's going to be consumers' money. That's uh, speaking of the fuel thing. Uh, I was just reading uh, what's his name, uh, Penguin Six or something like that. The guy that reports on ground in D.C. and stuff. Three days ago, he was reporting that the lines uh, that many of the gas stations were out of gas in DC and that the lines were all backed up. We saw that in the, in the Florida panhandle area as well. Uh, it doesn't take much, man. And all of a sudden, you know, you can't get gas. Then well, my, my point was, it's going to affect, it's, it's going to be tacked on to the cost of food, which is going to drive the prices up even oh. further, which is going to cause even more starvation for people who can't afford it. Yeah. I mean, you're going to, you're going to go into hyperinflation is what you're going to do. Exactly. Exactly. You know, which is, is pretty crazy. Barry, you seen anything crazy in California like that, Southern Cal? Our our gas prices have been at four thirty nine, four sixty. So yeah, when when I seen people complaining about two ninety nine, I was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> to be yeah. fair, it was below two dollars here about uh what hundred and some days ago. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. That takes me back to the eighties. Um <laughs> No, you know what? I, I've, I've seen prices go up on, on meats, you know, like we were looking at, at beef, beef prices were up. Um, so you can tell like when there is a shortage, those prices do jump. Um, yeah. But it's, but it, but we're not running out. So yet, but yeah, I'm, I'm hearing the talk, but again, I'm still not seeing, you know, the frantic people running around, you know, yeah. those, those gas lines were, looks like they were only in like 
six or seven states yeah. and uh, one shot one one shot was of Costco that line's always like that yeah. so there's there's still a bit of propaganda fear that they put out there um you know and it was only a certain percentage so I would you know again make sure we do our research when you know we I mean it could happen but yeah. it could be the the preparation of of where we're going to go and it's always nice to think that way anyway so you're prepared for it um, but yeah, that was kind of um, sporadic, and some of those sh- some of those shots were just like eh, that's Costco. It's always like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, so here's the thing: it's it's uh, you're right. It's it's uh, what happens is it's a trigger mechanism, like the toilet paper, right? Where all yeah. of a sudden somebody's like, so and so is out of toilet paper, and then there's a run on toilet paper. Like, you know, it, what's stupid is like it could be a run on hot dogs. People are like out <laughs> buying hot, you know, filling their carts full of hot dogs. Man, they come back and you're like, I don't even eat hot dogs. But I bought them just because I, you know, I don't want to be without them. It's it, it's it's kind of that that pack mentality, right? Like everybody goes into this wild dog mode and they just start getting everything. Um, that that can drive some shortages. It can put kind of a gap in the supply, right? And so uh, that's I don't think. I mean, that would happen. That happens. Like you get hurricanes, you get storms that come through, earthquakes, whatever it may be, and and you and that drives it. Um, I think what what I'm more concerned about is the fact that we've seen for a long period of time impacts to our farming communities with droughts, with, um, you know, uh, whether it's fires or whether it's storms that come through, but there's, we're seeing this big happen here in the U S now also in the headlines. I don't know if you guys saw this, but there is some record flooding going on in China right now. And it's wiping out mass amounts of where they they grow food and their crops and all the other stuff. That Three Gorges Dam or something mm-hmm. uh, has been just spewing. It's flooding all these communities. I want to say they they had like eighty five million people impacted by this flood or something. Um, and I just saw that yesterday. So it's uh, you know so you take their supply and their food, right? That's a big big. There's a lot of mouths to feed over there, right? Right. Um, you go into uh, India. Uh, we've been sending stuff over to India because they're also going through droughts and floods and all kinds of different stuff. And their food is being impacted also from COVID uh, because so many things shut down. Uh, and then you go into the Middle East and Africa where they're already in, in parts of Africa, they're already on you know like famine alert to begin with, right? Uh, but you had locusts, these massive amounts of locust swarms that went through for months, right? At first it was like little baby locusts and then it came into like the adult size and then it like went through all these different stages, but that went all the way across from India, all the way around. I mean, they had them in China, they had them all over the place, but Africa got hit really hard with these locust swarms and uh, that's still going on. It's happening now too. And so, um, but that's, those kind of things are going to drive an impact to supply, right? Because it, it just leans out everything that's out there and available. So, okay. So the next thing, uh, one of the things you guys ever, there's a website out there. It's, it's, uh, I think it's like end times prophecy or something. It, it, you can Google search it and it has to do with uh, mass die offs of animals and fish and everything on the planet. Have, have you guys ever been over to that site yet? No. If you ever get a chance, now it's kind of depressing to be honest with you, but uh, if you want to see what's been going on in the world the last seven years, these people, they've kind of, they don't do it as much anymore uh, because it's it's gotten, they, they and they tell you that at the very top of the page, that it's gotten so much they can't keep up with it all. And it's only one or two people, you know, that have been grabbing all these data points, but they grab ads or not ads, but um, uh, news segments from around the world. And they basically drop it into this this giant database and they just keep tabs on all of it. And so from like 2015 or so to now, every year it's been hundreds of millions of things dying off. And so I went over there today and just grabbed like five off off of the top. For the year, there's probably several hundred of these just for the year. And we're into, it's May, mid-May, right? And so this one is uh, in Indonesia. And this is uh, basically a, a giant fish die off. They say thousands of these fish are just kind of floating up on the surface and um you know remember when you get over into this part of the world they eat this is their food so we talk about food shortages and stuff you know this is a lot of their their markets are driven off of that their economy they 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 live off of this stuff so that's 
um, happening over in Indonesia. And then we get into uh, Lebanon, and we've got the same thing. Now, this is based on a polluted lake as it spews out tons of dead fish. And so, you know, these goes all the way around the lake like that. But that's, you know, I can't imagine what that smells like. But um, but these are dead carp that have been flushed out uh, up to the shores. Now, that's that's in Lebanon. And then you go into New Zealand, and same thing. It's... Um, uh, thousands of dead fish found in the eastern Auckland coastline. And so these are, these are, you know, it's just, like I said, you just go around the horn, you know, and then you get over to this stuff uh, in Bulgaria. And uh, here again, this is, this is actually a, another uh, 40,000 hens in, in the southeastern village of uh, Krivopol after the bird flu outbreak. And so that is the type of thing that I was actually seeing as I, as I went across the site was all of the chickens and the hens and stuff. And this is, you know, that's a major food source for a lot of folks, right? Oh yeah. And that, that's a lot of chicken, dude. I mean, a lot of eggs. Yeah. 40,000 birds. It's crazy. Can you imagine have, killing 40,000 birds? I mean, what do you, how do you even do that? It's just messy to begin with, but, uh, but that, those that I was just showing those headlines are, if you go back just in 2021 and there's, there's hundreds of them and every one of them, you like, you dig into some and it's, it's, uh, you know, it's a half a million chickens in in Southeast Asia where they basically had a bird flu and they got to go in and they kill them all because it spreads and it's, it's crazy. But Think about the food supply, what that does to pricing, what it does to the supply. Um, that's a pretty big impact. Yeah, I mean, because they're not a, not just trying to feed their own country. I mean, I'm sure some of them are, you know, hitting that over to other places, you know, other markets, supporting other countries. You know, you think about, like you just said, you, you know, with Mexico, with the drought, I mean, we had those trade deals with uh, some of that fact, you know, factory stuff coming from Mexico and Canada. And then now they're getting hit with droughts and you kind of think the same thing for these people. I'm sure they were trading across their, you know, cities and countries and whatever, but yeah, not even be able to feed their own. So. Yeah. It's global trade. That's so, and, and that's part of our big, like if you go look at what the U S does and how we provide all of this aid to all these different countries, it's not a matter of, I mean, forget the fact that our, our administration is funding terrorism around the world. Right. Um, but you know, we do send uh, a lot, a lot of food to, you know, to the Middle East, to Africa, to India. I mean, to China. We've got um, a lot of our corn goes to China. A lot of our rice goes to China. And so when you start impacting, all of a sudden we start running dry, that, that'll squeeze the rest of the world. It's kind of like our monetary system, right? Uh, think about 9-11 when that impacted, the U.S. got hit, right? And all of a sudden... We, um, you know, Wall Street shut down, our stock, our stock market collapsed. There was all kinds of different things. And it just sent the rest of the world into a tailspin. And so those are the things when you start looking at like Matthew 24 and you start uh, reading how these birth pains are coming into play and how the world is going to be into this chaotic cycle and it's going to just keep increasing. I, you know, that's the kind of stuff that we're seeing. It's, it's. Every year, it just kind of gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And we've got to just, as, as Christians, we've got to get, you know, we got to keep spreading the word, you know, getting, getting the word out because it's, it's, um, time is short, man. And, uh, you know, it, it, time to quit messing around, <laughs> you know? So, hey, Bear, do you want to talk a little bit about, uh, the Bard Fest? You know, while we've got, we got about five minutes left, man. I, I yeah, wanted to kind of yeah. give you the, the mic to so, talk about it. So what we have going on is um, in August 26th to the 29th in um, St. Charles, Missouri, we uh, will be hosting a Bards Fest. It's going to be uh, family oriented around centering everything around God. And so we, we're seeing this world as we talk through these um, segments, as we look around what's going on, we see God taking out of just about everything. Um, we're going to pull this some type of revival back and bringing, bringing God back into the center of all things. And so we're going to have pastors uh, speaking. Um, we'll have events, you know, happening throughout the day, um, kind of going through what, what it looks like um, bringing God into your home, 
um, just kind of centering everything around your life and then kind of pushing that through and then kind of looking at you, you know, where you live county by county of, of who's running your county and knowing that you have the power to make change locally from the bottom up. And so that's kind of an education thing. It's kind of a really focus on, you know, what God's doing in, in, in through Christians lives um, in, in some of these churches who never shut down, like my church um, never shut down, shut down. And, and um, because when we look at, at the end of the day, doesn't matter who is president, doesn't matter who's your governor, Jesus is King and he's the one that rules everything. So that's the standpoint we're taking. And so Bart's Fest is going to be um, just all about that, just solely focused on Jesus Christ and, and him being the center of our world. I mean, yeah, we get it. We're here on earth and this isn't our world, but while we're here, this is who we are. Absolutely. That's good, man. I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm planning on being there. I'm going to, uh, see if I can't make sure I've got that blocked off on my calendar. And yes, <laughs> I'm an hour away. Are you? Oh, nice. I'm nice. 26 hours away and I'm driving there. <laughs> are you driving? If you need, I'm going to drive. Yeah, I'm driving too. I ain't, I'm not getting on a plane, but seems like I know somebody who used to run a bed and breakfast that has rooms available. Oh, hour out, huh? <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, we may have to talk, man. But um, <laughs> yeah, so that, I'm I'm pretty excited about it. I think uh, you you've even talked about it. so that's Bards of War, right? That's Bards FM uh, that's, that's going to be pulling that together. And I've heard some pretty good names are coming into this, and it's not going to be the the Patriot type of thing. It's more the God thing, right? It's not. Yep. Strictly, yep. It's yeah. We get we get the patriotism side, but this is all about God, God and yeah. family. Because then we're going to start a... back at the roots, right? We look at the we look at our country, and we were all distracted. We all just let things go. We just gave it all to the government, yeah. and it's like, dude, it's because we took the eye off the prize. We 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 you know we allowed all a lot of things to happen, and it starts back in back in the homes. It really does. Good. I think it's going to be a powerful message, man. I'm I'm uh, excited about it, especially as this thing starts to grab some legs and we start figuring out who all's going and, and everything else. But that's uh, that's got to be solid, dude. Yeah. All right. So, do you have, do you have uh, to get tickets or anything in advance, or yeah, we we're yeah. So this thing's just it's it's now just launching. Um. So the 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 tickets will be published, I believe, in a in a few weeks here, in a couple of weeks here. So they'll be, they'll be we'll, we're going to post this everywhere. Okay. So. I want to go. All right. Well, good, man. We'll, we'll talk more about it in, uh, as we get through some of the sit reps and things like that. And then uh, uh, we'll make sure we get it out to everybody, too. So, um, all right. So, hey, listen, if you guys are watching and, um, and you're a little bit concerned about it, um, I will tell you, if you're a Christian and you're already saved, um, then, folks, we got work to do. We got to get out and, um, and we really need to start uh, praying for people. We need to start being bold in Jesus' name, right? And not... Uh, uh, not just taking a back seat anymore because it is up to us and and um, uh, just just kind of remember that. So again, we've got work to do. If if you're not a Christian and you're interested in being a Christian, uh, just remember it. It's as easy as A B C. A admit that you're a sinner. Romans three twenty three tells us that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. B believe that Jesus is Lord and died for your sins. Acts sixteen thirty one. Believe in Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. And C, call upon his name and confess those sins. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And so just remember, when you just call on his name, let him do the rest of the work. There, uh, there is nothing you could possibly do that can't be forgiven. And so um, just... Keep that in mind, folks. But uh, all right. So, hey, I didn't mess it up this time. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Uh, <laughs> I, Hotel, you weren't here, but, man, I drew a blank. I said, uh, hey, and then I looked oh. over at the chat, and, man, I went, like, I started chasing shiny objects, and I just drew a blank, and I I, um, I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that again. So I felt pretty bad, actually. But uh, uh, any overs or unders, guys, as we wrap this up? There was somebody in the chat when we first began who was asking whether or not we could conclude with a prayer as well. I don't know if you want to do that or yeah. not. I said I'd pass it on, though. I, I would love to. What do you think? Do it. Good. Wrap it up on a prayer? Let's do it, man. I'll, uh, I'll send us off, and then, uh, and then we'll get on uh, 
to our, our closeout. So, all right. So, uh, yeah, Father God, we just uh, we want to thank you for for your word this evening. We want to thank you for just opening our eyes and keeping us focused on your word, and just um, and we just thank you for fellowship and just being together, uh, and just just knowing that you are here with us right now, and that um, and that uh, I just pray for my brothers and sisters that um, those that are worried about this, that that have anxiety and fear, uh, that you just rest, uh, just just give them rest. Um, and just give them peace and, and, and just grace and mercy that like only you can do. Uh, lastly, Father God, I just want to plead the blood of Jesus over my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I just ask that you please uh, protect them and um, just keep them safe, Lord, in this crazy time. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, folks, that's it, man. Uh, any overs or unders from you guys? No. All, good. All right. Okay, guys. Well, hey, thank you all for tuning in. And uh, next week we'll be back. Uh, not next week. In two weeks we'll be back on. And uh, uh, I think we're going to talk about the rapture next, which is going to be a pretty hot topic. And so, uh, but anyway, looking forward to that. And uh, we'll see you guys in two weeks. God bless. Monkey out.